Oh man, so Bitcoin is sitting just shy of $39,000. Phantom is back at 164, but more importantly, we know what the focus of the market is right now, the Ukraine tensions. And we've got some mixed messages which we need to digest before going into this really important week. This is going to be now the second week that this crisis goes into, and we need to start getting some sort of direction here in the market. I'm going to share with you in this video which levels I'm looking at here on the charts for both Bitcoin and obviously therefore Phantom. Remember, we know the layers, right? We need to look at the crisis. How is that driving the underlying market? That will drive the market. Bitcoin will correlate with that market and therefore our altcoins will correlate with it. As always, guys, if you appreciate these types of videos where I take technical analysis, I show you the charts, I show you the patterns, I show you the support and resistance levels, but at the same time, I layer in those macroeconomic elements so you can bring in both TA and FA in one precise video. Smash up the like, subscribe. Don't forget to check out Nord VPN who've been kind enough to help us here with this video and support this community to offer 70% off. Yep, that's 70% off a two-year plan to get yourself set up on a VPN, guys. Absolutely no-brainer. Get yourself set up on a VPN. Coupon code, oh man, details in the links in the description. Click through to the NordVPN website and you'll realize how much of your data is so publicly available that we have no idea about. Go ahead and check that out. Now, you can see here on Bitcoin in the charts what we can see is that we're currently sitting at 38,900. And it's been a pretty sideways weekend, which makes a lot of sense. We had a lot of drama, a lot of buy the dip action, and now we're sideways. So Bitcoin is almost setting out its stance that it says, you know, if we're sitting at 38, 39,000. And if things start to improve, if the if the crisis starts to de-escalate or we get some good macroeconomic news, then we're ready to break for 40,000 again and revisit the levels which we were at a couple of weeks ago. Okay, but it's also saying that I'm nervy. If things go bad, I'm looking to come to the downside to collect some support at some of the lower levels. And those lower levels precisely for Bitcoin are the levels towards 37 and 36. We know those are important levels. We then got where we dipped initially when the crisis started, which is now a new important level uh, for the recent time frame, which is 34 and a half thousand roughly. And then we know we've got our 32, right, which is where we uh, pivoted from initially when we ran to our lows Um you know, a few weeks ago. Well, it feels like weeks ago, but I don't know how long it was ago, okay? Back back when we fell to our 32, okay? So that's really important. So those are the levels we're looking for, but it depends on what happens to the crisis. And right now, we know that there's a bit of mixed messages. I mean, the first thing is this. Putin orders Russian nuclear deterrence forces on high alert. Ukraine, and, but then, equally, on the other side, we're getting articles, we're getting this type of stuff. Okay, Ukrainian delegation agrees to meet with Russians at Belarus border, according to President Zelensky's office. So we know that there's a bit of you know mixed feelings right now. We know that Russia is still going ahead with their offensive. We know there's stuff going on. It's super violent. Uh, and at the same time, he's put high alert for a lot of these functions, which includes nuclear. OK, um, so we know that is going to spook the market. But then on the other side, good news is that they're talking. Right. The delegations are going to meet. They're going to meet in uh, Belarus in the Belarusian border between Ukraine and Belarus, which is good. They've agreed to make sure that the Belarusians take responsibility, that nobody in the delegation is harmed. They can get there smoothly, have the discussions and go back. So at least if you're having a conversation and nobody's being, um, you know, what's the, what's the right word for it? No one's being difficult, right? It's a difficult time anyway, but you can imagine when two people are fighting, it's difficult to get them to sit down and say, let's at least try have a dialogue, literally right in the heat of the moment when you're fighting. So it's good that they're giving diplomacy a chance. And this is our best option. I said this when the, when the crisis first started. This is the best option, obviously, for humanity to stop the pain and the suffering. But also from an investment point of view, that is the quickest way for us to just start rallying back up, right? If we can end this fear, all that's been priced in of the negatives to the downside and any escalations can shoot us to the upside. But what we want to avoid is things like this. Things like this will spook the market, okay? So it's interesting that we're getting, you know, two news articles on the same day with conflicting messages. One would calm the market, which is that we're seeing some diplomacy. And the other one is that, no, you know, NATO's giving us all these sanctions. Therefore, we're putting our defense on our deterrent systems and forces on high alert, which includes nuclear, right? So very interesting. I mean, here in the UK, we know one of the big uh, oligarchs, uh, Ro uh, Roman Abramovich, who owned Chelsea Football Club, he moved the football club into a, in Chelsea, in a Chelsea charity trustee fund so that they don't have any issues there in case the UK freezes assets. So there's a lot going on. We know that, you know, the Champions League has been moved from Russia. We know there's been various, uh, you know, 
um, boycotts with uh, motorsports. We know that um, the UK FA, which is the Football Association, has said that uh, England will not play any games versus Russia for the foreseeable future. So there's a lot going on economically. We know that we're hearing sentiment around um, some smaller banks, being t Russian banks, being taken off the SWIFT network. For anybody who's not familiar, the SWIFT network is like the plumbing that allows com countries, banks in different countries, to communicate, to interbank between each other, okay? So it's a big deal. This is what allows people to buy, import, uh, buy imports and other to sell exports right it's how the money exchange happens so by removing these russian banks it's it's a real way to stop people from doing business with russia that's the idea right that's what how sanctions work now we know that nato forces are not going to uh, send any physical help to the ukrainian territory because they're not part of nato but what they will, they will continue to do is send arms and that's what we're seeing here we can see this article here germany to send weapons directly to ukraine uh, this will include anti-tank missiles uh, ground to i mean surface to air missiles and various other high-tech missile uh, equipment right as we would expect so, you know, no signs of this easing, even though the, the, that one article I showed you that the fact they're trying to give diplomacy a route is a positive. We, everything else is still on high alert, right? Arms are going uh, and all the plans are being put in place to, for this to escalate. So it's not ideal and the market will understand that it's going to price that in. Fear and greed index is sitting at 26, OK? So it's not getting crazy out of hand, uh, but it's also not neutral. It's still fear, right? It's not extreme fear. It's just fear and the market is uncertain right now. We just don't know which direction this is heading in and how long this could last for. This can drag on for years. Years, it could be a couple of days. We really don't know. And that uncertainty is actually really spooky. So without further ado, let's go into the phantom charts and look at some key levels. Because and the reason I'm spending so much time on the macro economy is we know I can show you any pattern I want here in the phantom charts. It's irrelevant, right? If the crisis goes ahead or escalates or de-escalates, it's going to move the market. Bitcoin will follow and therefore all coins will follow. But we will look at the charts anyway for those who are monitoring this on the short term. And what I can see is obviously here on the hourly, we broke out a trend, okay? We had a good breakout trend here from the red pattern to the upside, which was good. Now, normally you'd be happy to get a retest. Remember when you break out, you're happy to get a retest of the line to the, then back up to the upside from a technical perspective, okay? So from a sheerly technical perspective, you'd be happy to even come and call off a little bit up to 153 here on phantom although we seem to be trying to get support from uh, 165 which we know is an important level here from various touch points uh, on phantom but i am seeing a little bit of a bearish pattern which you could argue we are forming a little bit of a head and shoulders pattern okay so something to watch again head and shoulders pattern given the climate we're in not something major right now again like i said this is, could just be a nice test of the trend line before getting the bounce to the upside. Basically, we need to find out what's going on in this crisis and how does Bitcoin feel? And that's why I am focused right now on long-term narratives. And the long-term narrative is so clear for me right now. I mean, the amount of funding going to Ukraine through Bitcoin is crazy. Just in the last couple of weeks, we have seen two primary use cases of cryptocurrencies in first world established countries. Okay, we had Canada, and the protest and the truckers, and we saw how Canada freezed assets over that protest, okay? We saw how they tried to whitelist uh, crypto addresses, which failed because the crypto addresses got drained of the Bitcoin immediately, which shows the robustness of crypto as a immutable and... Um, unfreezable asset right you can't freeze it once people if people know what they're doing have a little bit of knowledge in crypto you can't freeze their addresses if they have one address they don't know what they're doing then maybe fine okay, and if it's centralized then definitely yeah but if people know what they're doing you can't track their crypto and then you've got the other hand which is what we've seen with ukraine right so in in the ukrainian situation you can see that there's a run on banks right now people are fearful as you'd expect they're running to the atm they're trying to take cash out to escape and they can't get cash there's a run on a bank right the bank only holds a certain amount of cash they don't hold all, they don't hold all your cash in a bank that's called a bank run right so the, the crazy thing is you can't access your cash if you've got fiat currency and things like this happen whether it's a uh, what's going on in canada and then freezing your account or whether it's uh what's happening in um in uh ukraine uh with the run on a bank then it's hard for you to access your cash but if it's crypto you just up and leave right you've got your you hold your seed phrase in your head and you're good to go you go to find yourself a place where there's an internet connection and, and you you're good to go okay now the other use case you get is you know not to say i'm taking sides but you've also got the russian side of things if you're a russian person right now and now the whole world is against you if you're just a normal civilian right because i know that because i'm here in the uk i didn't vote for the iraq war i didn't vote for what happened in syria libya or any of these countries where the countries where i reside and decide to go to war but we get 
you know, if those sanctions will come back on us as well, right? So the Russian civilians are facing sanctions too, and it can be difficult for their livelihoods. So now they're going to suffer. Their ruble has tanked. Their stock markets have fallen, right? So what best place for them them to put their money now that their banks are off the SWIFT network? How are they going to send money to their friends and family abroad or do business? That's why they need to be in crypto. So straight away, we're seeing so many narratives across the globe for people who should really be in crypto. And I think the remi- the reminder for us here is how powerful a global message this is and why fundamentally we go and take a hard-earned money and we buy crypto, not just for speculation, not just for a head and shoulders pattern on the charts, as fun as that is, but for the long-term narratives. Hang on a second. The existing system is flawed. And that's why we all fell in love in crypto in the first place. That's why we continue to research it. We build conviction in Bitcoin and then ultimately all our altcoins follow and we become degens in the process as well. But the majority of our portfolio should always be in, you know, the fundamental direction of what we're trying to change, which is to 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 be this hedge against the global fiat currency. And you can tell that Bitcoin is uh, in need right now in today's society. So overall, you're seeing Bitcoin holding up really well, really impressive, given this is one of its first major uh, tests here in terms of this uh, type of conflict. Uh, it's doing pretty well. We're not got fallen back to our 32 levels. We're sitting here at 38, 39. We run up past 40,000 and just consolidated down, just waiting on direction. Is it going to, you know, it can obviously fall back to 32 if the conflict gets worse, if other NATO countries get involved, or if NATO starts selling, sending military personnel while we hear the word nuclear being thrown away around. Of course, we're going to fall to the downside. But if we can go the diplomacy route, if we can start seeing an end to this aggression, equally, we can push through 40 and get back quite quickly to where we were at. So there you go, guys. Hope you guys found this video useful. As always, as promised, I'm going to be here giving you this update through this crisis. So if you appreciate that, make sure you smash up the like button and you're subscribing. If you want to see me do more live streams of the news, guys, I'm going to be back in my studio from tomorrow. Let me know in the comments below if that's what you want to see so I can cover the news and cover the charts at the same time and give you my commentary on what I think is going, what's going on and what I'm doing. As always, guys, don't forget to support NordVPN. Links in the description, coupon code oh man, to get yourself set up on a VPN. There is not a more important time to maintain your privacy than it is today. So make sure you are private, you can't be traced, your IP is masked, uh, and you got yourself set up on a VPN. What I'm going to do now is at the end of this video, I'm going to link up the Phantom video, Can Phantom 100X. I'm also going to link up another video, so that will be somewhere in the top right and in the bottom uh, right, I'll link up another video, which is the most important Phantom video you'll watch. Okay, so go watch those two videos. Really important. They're two fundamental videos uh, in terms of giving you some fundamental analysis. Go watch those if you're investing in Phantom or if you want to invest in Phantom, because that is going to give you some of the architecture around it. Even if you've already watched those videos, go back and watch them. I'll often redo my fundamental analysis again and again and again, particularly in hard times, because that's what then reminds me to buy the dip. I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot how amazing this project is, and I'll go buy the dip. Not just for Phantom, but I do that for my other coins as well. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Smash up the like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.